friends, Tara here, but you can call me T-Pow. I can't believe we're already halfway through the year. If you watched my bullet journal set up last month, you might remember that I was running out of pages in my bullet journal and mentioned that I would be moving to a new one next month. And that new notebook is this one. It's the Suki Bullet Journal Nighttime Edition from Notebook Therapy. You might have also noticed in the title that this video contains information on a giveaway that I'm doing on my Instagram, but I'm going to tell you about that at the end of the video. So right now, let's get straight into the voiceover. So I've been waiting for this moment for many moons ever since Notebook Therapy sent me the Suki Bullet Journal Nighttime Edition. You guys know I started the year with the brand new Suki Bullet Journal from Notebook Therapy because I fell in love with it while I was reviewing it. And when Notebook Therapy released this limited edition nighttime edition, I literally had to have it. I love the rose gold accents and I love that it has two ribbon bookmarks. The cover is so soft and I knew once I had it in my hands that I would be switching to this bullet journal halfway through the year. So because I'm moving into a new bullet journal, I had to do a few things that you would normally do at the beginning of the year when you're setting up your bullet journal for the beginning of the year. So I decided to do kind of a little bit of a cover page and basically it says the second half of 2020. I wrote a sentiment that I think we're all low-key thinking hopefully the better half because let's be honest it's been a rough half of a year so far next i moved on to my at a glance and of course whenever i do my mid-year at a glance i do the last six months of the current year and the first six months of next year so if you look really closely you can faintly see where i've sketched out where the months are going to go. And I highly recommend doing this for your at a glance because it's easy to miscount because there are always going to be one or two months in a year that actually take up six week because maybe it has 31 days and the first day of the month is on a Sunday and the last day of the month is on a Monday and that's going to push that last day to an actual sixth week. So I highly recommend counting out and planning ahead when you're doing your at a glance. I didn't make any mistakes drawing the actual numbers but I decided to abbreviate all the months except for August for some reason. I wrote out the entire month of August I don't know, but that doesn't bother me as much as if I were to mess up the numbers. Next, I moved on to my future log, which I also kept pretty simple. When I do my future log at the beginning of the year, usually I have three months on each page and it takes up two full spreads, but I decided to condense it a little and put six months on each page. There's two other things I did differently. Normally, I would include a smaller at a glance on each month, but because all of that's on the previous page, if I need to reference that, I can just flip the page. And because of that, I was able to save space and able to put six months on each page. The other thing I decided to do differently is instead of putting color on the future log right now, I'm going to add color based on each theme that I do throughout the month. I've seen a lot of other people do this, so I can't really cite like any particular person, but I like the idea because that way it reflects each month as you look through the journal instead of having an arbitrary color scheme that doesn't really go with the rest of the journal. At least this is a way to tie it all together at the end. So for July, I chose green because as you saw from the title of this video, my theme is jungle. Next, I moved on to the birthday pages and I pretty much did what I did at the beginning of the year where I divided birthdays into zodiac signs because I just think that's so fun. The only thing I did different is I did not include the actual constellations this time just because I try not to make things super complicated for myself in the middle of the year, but I did still include the zodiac symbols and I wanted to talk about this gold pen that I found. My gold pen that I had been using since the beginning of the year ran out of ink, so I knew I wanted a gold pen for this spread, and we happened to be in Walmart, and I found the Uniball Gel Impact Signo Metallic Pens. It came with gold, silver, and white, and I just literally grabbed it because it was like one of the only metallic pens in the store, and I was like, this will work, and if it sucks, it's no big deal because it was pretty inexpensive. But when I got home, I looked at the package more closely, and it said 
bullet journaling on it. So I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I chose a product that said bullet journaling and didn't even notice it on it. But if you are looking for like a good white silver and gold pen that you don't have to like order online. I recommend these pens because they were inexpensive and pretty high quality. The last pages before I get into July are my weekly journaling prompts. Basically, I just like doing journal prompts once a week, so I keep them in my bullet journal and I will link down below to my list for this year in case you're interested in that type of thing. That was all the mid-year setup that I felt I needed to do, so now we're moving on to July. I almost never start with my quote page. I always start with my cover, but I decided to start with my quote page because it was going to be a lot more drawing than my cover page actually. And I actually used the technique where I put down washi tape so that I could make like a nice bold square in the middle, but without drawing it, like doing it with like the negative space. And then I went all around and drew a bunch of leaves that you might find in the jungle. I colored them in with a combination of Tombow dual brush tip markers and Crayola super tips markers. In this page alone, I probably used more colors than I normally do in an entire month. So that's the theme of this month is I used more supplies in this video than I think I've ever used in any bullet journal video. By the time I finished, my desk was covered in pens and I should have taken a picture of it, but like literally the part you're not seeing of the desk is covered in pens and markers. I used one of my darkest Crayola Super Tips markers and my Sakura Jelly Roll to give the leaves some detail and dimension. And then I pulled off the washi tape to reveal the negative space square in the middle. And then the quote I chose for this month is, the jungle is dark, but full of diamonds. And that is from author Arthur Miller. Moving on to my cover page, I enjoyed drawing this cover page so much. I feel like with a lot of themes, you end up drawing the same doodles over and over, but this theme excites me because there's so many different types of animals that I can choose from, so I can feature a different one each week and keep it fun throughout the month. But basically, I wanted to draw these vines hanging in the jungle, and I decided to draw a monkey hanging off of it and a toucan chilling on top of it. Again, I colored everything using a combination of Tombow Dua Brush Pens and Crayola Super Tips markers because those are the two types of markers that I enjoy coloring in things with the most. And when I was finished coloring, I wrote the word July with my Tombow Fudenosuke Brush Pens and that is also the type of pen I use to write my quote on the previous page. Moving on to my monthly spread, which so far this month contains my absolute favorite doodle of the month and possibly of the year. I'm kind of obsessed with the tiger that I draw on this page. At the top of the page, I drew some more jungle leaves. There's so much green in this spread. It's probably the greenest theme that I've ever chosen because I tend not to do much green, but obviously you can't do jungle without green. And in the corner, I drew a little tiger, and it honestly is probably my favorite doodle of not only this month, but probably of the entire year. And I'm so glad I'm starting out a brand new journal on such a high note. I really, 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 really love this tiger. <laughs> And then I went back with this Tombow dual brush pen. It's number 133. I ended up using it a lot in my spreads and kind of used it as like a feature color because I really liked it. Next is my Instagram and YouTube trackers. And instead of having two pages for Instagram and two pages for YouTube, I decided to have one page for each because I wasn't really filling both pages before. So on my Instagram tracker, I have a line for every day of the month so that I can write down if I'm posting something that day and what I'm posting and keep track of it and check it off once I've done it. And then at the bottom, I have three boxes that I can take notes in. One is my to-do list, one is for notes, and the third one is for any milestones that I might hit during the month, even though as a whole, I try not to pay attention to numbers. For my YouTube tracker, I have a little calendar so that I can see on which days of the month, Wednesdays and Saturdays fall, because I have a new upload schedule of vlogs on Saturdays and regular videos on Wednesdays. I always post my bullet journal video on the last Sunday 
of the month, which if you're watching this on the day I post it is the last Sunday of the month. So that is my new upload schedule. I've been doing it for about a month and a half and it's been going really well. On this page, I decided to include a little drawing of a parrot just to add a little bit more color besides the green. And then next to the calendar, I have a little place where I can write what I'm uploading on each of those days. And then at the bottom, I just have a to-do list and a space for notes. I keep the majority of my notes for videos in my OneNote app. There's no way I could fit it in a bullet journal, but this is for more like big picture stuff. Next, we're moving on. This is kind of a throwback because I haven't done this spread in so long, but we're bringing back the yoga page. Ever since I did my bedroom declutter, I have been back in the swing of my yoga routine. I can't say that I've actually done it every single night. I'm not perfect but I've been doing it regularly enough to bring back the yoga page. I can never fill this out when I record because I do the yoga with Adrienne calendar and she doesn't release that until like the day I would be posting this. But basically I love yoga with Adrienne on YouTube and every month she releases a calendar with a different yoga practice you can do each day of the month. And instead of following the calendar to a T, oftentimes I will reorder the practices based on the length of time. So sometimes I'll save the longer practices for like a Sunday or a Thursday when I'm not as busy and I will put the shorter practices like at the beginning of the week when I might be busier and can't dedicate like an hour to yoga. On this page I just drew a flamingo because I feel like if any of the jungle animals was gonna do yoga it would be a flamingo. Next is my habit tracker and I'm doing something different here as well. I usually set up my habit trackers in a grid that is shaped more like a calendar with like seven across and five or six down, but I decided to do like longer horizontal habit trackers because I had an odd number that I wanted to track this month and I didn't want it to look uneven. So for the first time ever, I'm doing long horizontal habit trackers. At the bottom, I drew another toucan just to keep it cohesive because I had a flamingo on one page, so I wanted to have another bird on the other page. This month, the habits that I'm tracking are journaling, vitamins, working out, yoga, and skincare. I took away my water tracker because I've been doing that in my Apple Watch more, so I don't find myself reaching for my bullet journal every time I finish a cup of water. So for this month, I'm just not gonna include that and see how it feels. Finally, we're to the first weekly spread of the month, and I, again, am obsessed with the doodles on this page. I always include a little at a glance in the corner of almost all of my weekly spreads. I didn't do it as much last month when I was doing those one page weekly spreads, but if I ever have two pages, there is always a little at a glance because it just helps me plan ahead if I can like see the whole calendar at once. So at the top of the page, I'm drawing another tiger, but this tiger is chilling on like a tree branch. And after I drew this, I was like, wait, can tigers actually like climb trees and sit in them? I don't know how accurate that is, but I got this idea from a few different um, pictures that I saw on Instagram of artwork, including a tiger in a tree. So I feel like if that many people draw it, maybe it actually can occur in nature. When I showed it to my fiance, he called it a casual tiger because of the way it's sitting in the tree and I loved that so much. I might have loved that description more than the actual drawing. As a side note, I feel like he always comes up with the best descriptions of my doodles. Like last month when he called the sushi between the chopsticks expression joyful to be eaten. He just brings such a unique perspective to my doodles. So my new favorite thing to do is show them to him and have him describe what he thinks they are to me without like any leading questions because he always comes up with something so funny to me. Now, obviously, I am not a great artist. I've never claimed to be. I can draw lots of things, but they will never not look cartoonish. And I've accepted that. That is just my style. I'm okay with it. I still think the tiger is super cute, 
even if it's not super realistic. On the other page, I decided to draw another flamingo because I really wanted that pop of pink on the page because there's so much green in this theme, but like I really love that I can add color by drawing parrots and flamingos, and I'm really excited to feature different animals in every weekly spread because there's so many to choose from when you do a jungle theme. And then for actual planning space in this weekly spread, I just drew seven boxes, one for each day of the week, and kept it really simple so that it wouldn't take away from these drawings that I worked so hard on. This is one of those spreads that I feel has a really good balance between being artistic and aesthetically pleasing, as well as super practical, because you know that's my pet peeve. I hate when bullet journal spreads are really good looking, but not practical, because I feel like sometimes we forget this isn't like an art project. It's still a planner, so it should still help you to be productive, and obviously to each his own. My pet peeve is when I see really, really impressive art in a bullet journal, but like there's no space to plan. So at that point, is it like, are you just writing dates on it so that you can call it a bullet journal? Or are you actually using it to plan? Cause it doesn't look like you have much room, but I feel this is a really good mix of the two. And here we have the final flip through. I know that the beginning is pretty bland right now, but obviously I'm going to add more color as the months go on. I love the gold pen, and once you get into the jungle theme, it's like so colorful. I am so happy with it. I think it's so bold. It's so different from anything I've ever done, and I think it's a great start to a new bullet journal. And that was my July slash mid-year bullet journal setup. It might actually be my favorite theme I've done so far this year. But as promised, here's some information on how to enter the giveaway. All of the information you need to enter the giveaway can be found on my Instagram, at tpowsbujo. Look for this picture, which I posted at the same time as this video. The caption of that picture will tell you how to enter, but basically, once you go to the link in my bio, it'll be pretty self-explanatory from there. But the one thing I want to stress is that you make sure that you enter through the link in my bio because your entry might not be counted if you don't enter through the link. You can find all of the information there, but I will say it in this video too. The giveaway is open from today, June 28th, until Wednesday, July 22nd. The winner will first be announced on my channel on Wednesday, July 29th, when I post my wedding planner binder reveal video. There are a few different ways to enter, and you don't have to do them all, but each one you do increases your chances of winning. And if you do all of them, you can actually unlock a bonus entry, which means you can earn up to five entries in the giveaway. I also wanted to mention that by entering the giveaway, you are giving permission for me to use your Instagram username and your profile picture when I announce you as the winner. All of this is in the terms and conditions, which can also be found at the same link as the giveaway. I wish I didn't have to do that, but in my first giveaway that I ever did, the winner did not want me to share their personal information, and I respected that, but then I was accused of not actually picking a winner or handing out a prize. So as much as I would love to respect the winner's privacy, I also don't want to be accused of not giving out a prize. Again. Again, all of this information can be found at the link in my bio at tpowsbujo. That picture tells you exactly how to enter and what you'll win if you win the giveaway. And lastly, if you do enter the giveaway, thank you very much and I wish you good luck. As always, thank you so much for watching. I wish everyone a productive month and I'll see you next time.